Paul, this draft is exhausting. I know. <laughs> We're not even at it yet. The draft is... But here's the thing that gets me about the draft. It makes you forget about some guys that are already on your team. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can mention all of the... You know, we can mention Harrison Phillips. You know, we can mention certain like Duke Williams. We can mention you know certain guys, you know, of that nature. Uh, Croft. I mean, Claypool is such a big name. Everyone's talking about replacing you know Croft and all this other stuff. If you had to pick a guy that was, you know, a forgotten player because of the draft and all the talks that are going on, offensively and defensively, who do you think you'd pick? make this fun because we didn't talk about this. I think it's going to be great. Uh, you pick a defensive guy and then I'll pick a guy and then we'll go over to the offense with that. So I'll try to pick a guy to counter your guy. Okay. That's easy. We'll start with defense. Sure. I like it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to take AJ Klein. Oh, cause zero people are talking about AJ Klein in Buffalo. Right. Yeah, that's right. And and honestly, you go back and you look at his tenure with the Saints, it's pretty underwhelming, you know? Like, really, the last time anybody was excited about him was when he was backing up Keekly in, in Carolina. So it's, it's he's a guy that I think a lot of Bills fans just, oh, he can play. I think that's the way it's looked at right now. What's your, what's your line, Paul? He's what do you mean? He's fine. fine. He's fine. <laughs> let, me pull up my, uh, let me pull up my numbers here. Um, so it says that AJ Klein signed a three-year deal with Buffalo, 18 million, six a year, yeah. 9.7 yeah. guaranteed. That's a song. Given mm-hmm. what possibly Milano will want, mm-hmm. that's almost like a steal for a guy that already has familiarity within your system. It's not like he's going to be right. new. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your guy is AJ Klein, a guy that's gonna, that's kind of forgotten right now. A, a guy that I will counter with is a guy that did not play a snap in 2019 for the Buffalo Bills, who was drafted by the Buffalo Bills. Mm -hmm. Now, we can argue this point all day, and I'd love to do that. Getting drafted versus getting signed in free agency coming into the Buffalo Bills. Because we know those are two different animals that happen. Uh, I'm going to go with Voshan Joseph. Oh, I like that one. I I like that one a lot. I think, and I've said this, we we said it on the stream that we did. To me, it's an extra, extra draft pick. Voshan Joseph has been in the building. He knows the defense. I mean, you'd like to think that he knows the defense. He's been, you know, at the facility. He already has adjusted to the pro game. And not from on the field. I'm talking about off the field stuff. You know what I mean? He's, he's, this is his job now. For a year, he's been in the building doing everything else he needs to do. Yep. Those two guys combined, I think, may circumvent drafting a safety or a linebacker and the worries about Milano, because we talk about Bean all the time. He always covers his bases. So yep. while I see your A.J. Klein to come in for Milano, because you got A.J. Klein at, at ages 29, 30, and 31 if you want. Right. He's not going to bleed into uh, – He's not going to. his contract won't bleed into Edmonds if you had to sign him at that point. You're covering yourself against Milano. However, I like Voshan for that position, though. I think that may – you know, they, they may have a bonus in this respect. If they're able to sign Milano to a team friendly deal, what do you do with Klein and, and Voshan? Mm-hmm. Is Voshan your big nickel? I mean, Voshan is a little thin to drop down to DN, but he's a great blitzer. He right? is. So does he become your Bruce Irvin, right? Where mm. he's your situational pass rush guy. You know, he's only playing 25, 30% of snaps, but he's making barely, you know, he's making league minimum. The guy was a fifth round pick, right? So he's never going to cost you anything. Yeah. Yeah. So if he's playing 30% of the snaps, what do you care? It's not costing you anything. No, he's right? not. If he's on no. the field and everybody goes, okay, you know, this guy is going to be there uh, just to blitz, that's, who cares? That works. Like you saw Max Crosby do it in New England, <laughs> right? Like it's, it, who cares? Was he in New England? No, he was in for the Raiders. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Bruce Bruce Irvin you're talking No, about. you said Max Crosby. Oh, yeah, I did say Max Crosby. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's right. He was with the Raiders. Uh, but that was a perfect example. They lost Irvin, replaced him with Max Crosby, right? Like, yeah. it's this, this is what the NFL does now. It's a situational role. And, and Voshan, Voshan scares me a little bit playing a true linebacker position. I don't think he moves side to side all that great. I don't. I think he gets caught up in the wash. I don't love his eyes. 
Uh, I don't think his instincts are great, but I'll tell you what, he is nasty. You give him a roll, and he he is a nasty, nasty, nasty player. Um, so there's a lot of things I like, but I don't see him taking over for Milano. <laughs> Paul, what? You're, you're hysterical. What? All the essential criteria that you need to be a linebacker. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> and you took everything, but he's nasty. Yeah. You know, like, he's nasty. Yeah. He's that's like mean. that's like dating somebody. You're like, you know what? She kind of smells bad. Um, she's too short. Uh, I don't like her job. She's really mean to me. She says some nasty stuff. But you know what? I really like her car. <laughs> but to your point, to your point, some of those things I agree with, some I don't. But to your point, that's why he's a fifth round pick. Right. I mean, yeah. this guy was in, uh, you know, he went to Florida. He is nasty. I'll agree with you 100% on that one. But maybe he's a guy that can hone his skills knowing now what he needs to do to play in this defense. I mean, maybe his eyes got a little bit better. Uh, I, I don't I don't know how much he worked. And, you know, he, he was mostly in rehab because he was an IR the whole year. Didn't accrue a season. I think that's a very important point to bring right. up with a lot of people. And what we mean by that is that because he was on IR, uh, you don't accrue a season. What that means is that the Bills still have him for four years. It's almost like a redshirt year, isn't it? Am I correct in saying that, Paul? So the way um, injured reserve works is – well, first off, let's talk about Voshan just, just real quickly. Okay. He was uh, kind of in a funky position last year because, you know, those IR spots you're allowed people designated to return? Yeah, he wasn't, right? right? Right. It, that only happens if you're um, if you're injured after week one, right? So if they put Voshan on the 53 and then IR'd him and freed up a spot, then he would have been eligible to return. But they IR'd him prior to that happening. So that makes that that's actually a big deal, right? He okay. was ineligible to return at the end of the season uh, because you can bring players back from IR. That's that's part of the deal. Um, but as far as uh, whether he accrues a season or not, I'll pull up the section of the CBA and give you the exact language for it. Okay. So that way we, we have the, the real CBA language on it. it, which as part of a CBA, this, this did not change in the new CBA. They kept this language. So I'll, okay. I'll pull up the actual CBA. For so it. while you're going through that, what I'm just going to try to do is, is to go over. And obviously he was drafted. He was, he's 20, he was 22 last year. He's going to be you're going to have him for ages 23, 24, and 25, if if the wording on the CBA is, is, is what I think it is. You're going to have him and A.J. Klein for like $7 million, $7 million, and almost $8 million over the next three years. So you have a 29, 30, 31-year-old A.J. Klein. You have a 23, 24, 25-year-old Voshan Joseph. And in that respect, I mean, that's going to, that's going to, that's going to put some heat on Milano, I think. I mean, you talk about Voshan, you say he's a little small on the, on the small side, being 6'1", 225. What do we talk about Milano? I mean, he's not huge. Also right. a fifth-round pick. So, uh, you know, I, I'm interested to see. It, it did say that he had an accrued season. Yeah. Uh, according so to Over the Cap. So. Yeah, and that's a good source. Over the Cap's a great place to look at that because yeah. here there's kind of a – it's. There's something called a credited season and an accrued season. They're a little bit different. So, like, if a player's on injured reserve, so let's – I'll use an example, right? Let's say the Bills signed back Mike Gillisley in week 14, right? Mm. Let's just say. Mm. They signed him in week 14. He wasn't on any team prior. Um, he gets injured that week, and the Bills IR him, right? They don't give him an injury settlement. They just IR him. He would not get an accrued season – Right, because the accrued season is based off of six games. Six games, yes. So you have to be on injured reserve for six games. Or okay? just, to, just to throw it out there, you got to be on, you got to be on the practice squad for twelve weeks. Is that mm -hmm. what that is? I uh, that sounds. Is that the new one? I think. That sounds right. Okay. All right. I, well, I mean, that, we're getting off topic, but the point is, uh, why? I mean, this is what a lot of teams do to keep players that they think may have the potential to come back. You know, I mean, they IR'd him. We saw it with Voshan Joseph because he was under contract. We we didn't see it with Le'Adrian Waddle because he was only right. on a one-year deal. But it, Le'Adrian Waddle had already he was already a vested veteran at that point. He's already been right. in the league and he already accrued those seasons. So what what I, what I'm saying is though, I love the comparison that we're going back and forth with here because you're talking about Voshan and AJ Klein. That was a warning, I think. AJ Klein, I think, 
I think Voshan Joseph being drafted was the first hint at Milano, and I mm-hmm. think that AJ Klein was the second. Hey, we'd like to keep you here, but only if the numbers. They're not going to sit there and spend $16 million or 14. Let's just say four. Let's make it easy. They're not going to have $15 million or four, oh. 14 design to Matt Milano. And then you're also paying AJ Klein and Voshan Joseph six. They're not going to designate $20 million to one position. Right. When you have Edmonds and Allen and a bunch of other guys you got to sign as well. Mm-hmm. They'll designate 20 to Trey White. <laughs> But to designate 20 to those three guys, they won't do it. They'll either cut a guy or they'll be like, listen, we're going to move on from Milano, which is yeah, – I don't even want to think yeah. about that. I really don't even want to think about that. I know. Yep. But you let Milano walk, you're getting a third-round pick just as long as you don't sign more guys than, than you lost. Yeah. Just saying, you know, like Milano would be a big fish if he hits the free agency market. He really would be. But he, the Bills have have sn- they've done their homework and, and they protected themselves against Matt Milano leaving next offseason. It's again a narrative I haven't heard. But Voshan, I get, I think profiles more as a situational blitzer, whereas AJ yeah. Klein could really play the role that Matt Milano's played. Now, mind you, not near the production for AJ Klein. AJ Klein saw a double or saw an, saw an increase uh, in snap count when he went to New Orleans from Carolina. Uh, double the snap count and really very minimal increase in production from a tackle standpoint uh, based on the percentage of the snap count increase. So uh, really, you know, 66, 70% of the snaps he was playing and and production was only marginally better than when he was in Carolina. Um, I think uh, McDermott knows how to get the best out of AJ Klein, but this may be a situation. AJ Klein comes in, struggles a little bit to start. He's there on a three year deal. You're, you got to ride with him for at least this year. And uh, again, he could be that bridge if if you can't get the Milano deal done. He at least buys you a little bit of time. Yeah, if the length of the deal was shorter, I would yeah. say that it's the equivalent of TJ Yeldon. Like AJ yeah. Klein is your defensive yeah. version of TJ Yeldon. It's funny they both yeah. have initials for their names. But the point <laughs> being is this: uh, that's 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 his band aid. That's him mm-hmm. being proactive and saying, listen. I don't know if we're going to be able to re-sign Matt Milano, so let's try to cover our bases here. That's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one. One's flashier than the other, man. I'll tell you what. There's a lot of people that want to see Voshan Joseph successful. I don't think many people care about AJ Klein, <laughs> so that's a good one. Well, I mean, Klein Klein's played in the NFL. I think that's the difference. We you you it's the it's the verse it's the known versus the unknown. You know what right. you have. And it's funny that they signed him to a three-year contract with Voshan having three years left. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, we're going to find out that if we can't sign Milano, we have these guys for two more years apiece. Right. Either they're going to get it or they're not. Right. We're not waiting. Yep. We'll, walk, no. we'll wash our hands of both of these guys if we need to. Right. So. Yeah. It's important. It's, it's important to know that as a fan, though. Like you got, you got to know when, when the team's going to pull the rip cord. Yeah. I, I think, think the, I think they're closer. They're more prepared for it than it appears. Yeah. We're, the, finding out how much the business sense of the NFL plays into the actual on the field stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's something that's hidden and it's something that you, if you want to take the time to invest, to look it up and do this and that and the other thing, it's interesting, but I, I just don't know. Um, it's not a, a high on people's priority list to, to sit there and think about that and talk about that and be like, okay, all right. A lot of people are blinded by the fact that, oh, yeah, it was A.J. Klein. He was drafted by Carolina. Surprise, surprise, that being a McDermott and got those guys but mm-hmm. or, or got him. But then they're also like, wait a minute. You drafted Voshan last year. You signed mm-hmm. A.J. Klein this year. You know Milano's coming up for a contract. What are we going to do? Right. So Right. Shifting gears, going over to the offensive side of the ball. I will go first. I will take your favorite player on the Buffalo Bills. Oh, all right. I will say. Are we still going to be? Are we still going to be friends after this? We could be. Okay. I'll I'll let you know. But the point being is this: uh, a position that's forgotten and not really talked about because of all the flashy new toys that are coming out in the draft and who could be possibly selected at fifty-four, plus the Stephon Diggs, after, you know, getting traded uh, mm-hmm. for the first-round pick. I'm going to go Deion Dawkins. Um, everyone wants to say, I know, everyone wants to say it's a put up or shut up year for Josh Allen, mm-hmm. for this guy, that guy. Um, what are you going to pay Milano? What are you going to pay Trey, Trey White? Um, but Dawkins is a guy that is so intriguing to me because everyone wants to say how Allen goes is how the offense is going to go. Well, the second guy, I mean, it, there's a rule in the NFL. You get, 
you get there's three guys that you guys need. You need quarterback, guy to protect quarterback, and guy to get quarterback. <laughs> like people consider the three most positions, most important yeah. positions in the NFL. So just as we talked about Milano, um, in passing because of Voshan and AJ, I think Deion Dawkins is such an intriguing prospect that is going to, mm-hmm. he can't fly under the radar this year. Right. It's, are you going to be a franchise left tackle or not? Mm-hmm. Well, and it's interesting. The bill's sitting at 54, you know, they're ripe to try and replace him because let's be real. Cody Ford was picked at the 38th selection and Deion Dawkins was picked with the 63rd. Right. So Ooh. it's not like they haven't tried the tackle in the second round thing before. <laughs> uh, now it, would you really expect the Bills to 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 pull the trigger on a tackle at 54? No, I'm really – I mean, you drafted Cody Ford last year. You really don't expect him to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that there is a history here of them, that recent history of them well, doing this. Well, I mean, Buffalo I – mean, Paul, the, the Bills drafted two tight ends and signed one last year, and people want to draft Chase Claypool to put him at tight end. So yeah. It's not- <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. Sometimes it happens, you know. <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, so, a couple of things. I'll I'll take the opposite of this. So, you want to take Cody Ford? You want to take Deion Dawkins? I'll take Cody Ford. So, Ooh, I Ford had a na- line. That's interesting. Ford had a bad season, dude. This is Thunderdome to me. Like you, you bring up Deion Dawkins as a forgotten player, then you have to talk about Cody Ford because you're in a contract situation with Deion Dawkins. He's in the last year of his deal. You just drafted Cody Ford. So you're, you know, you're 738 snaps into knowing whether or not that was a mistake. And you kind of need to make a determination. Is Cody Ford going to be the guy that you want to move forward with at the right tackle position or the left tackle position? Or are you really looking at bringing in Dawkins and keeping them long term and then making this, you know, letting Cody Ford learn on the job at right tackle? But you need to you need to put up or shut up here. Um, mm. it, because it's a very expensive decision. You could dumpster dive for another tackle if you want. Mm. Um, you know, that's what, the, well, that's what they did with Ty Naseki, right? They, they said this, this could work. We don't really know. Um, and, and Ty Naseki, he only played like 300 some snaps. Like it, it, it didn't go great. No. Um, but you're, you're back with Ty Naseki again in 2020. So what are you doing here? Right. Cody Ford, mm. I think is one player on the offense. A lot of people have forgotten about and he could he could have a massive season. He could have a massive season. I, I I think I think Cody Ford having a big season, all things being equal, Cody Ford and Deion Dawkins, both you know had an, had both had outstanding seasons. Cody Ford would be talked about more because of how disastrous the season was last year. So you're saying that the Cody Ford of 2020, 2020 would be like the Deion Dawkins of 2019. Yeah, where they he yeah. improved from 2018 to 2019, and then 2019 to 2020 for Cody Ford. Uh, wow, that is, it's so interesting to, to think about and talk about because people, at least a lot of people, think that Cody Ford should be moving into guard. And now you're talking about if you're thinking about walking away from Deion Dawkins, you're going to put Cody Ford at left tackle. Yeah. Uh, well, I agree with you in this sense. Trying. To keep both of them and sign both of them would be very tough for the Buffalo Bills, given the contracts that are coming up on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. And you got to make a decision. Cody Ford, uh, what's the team that we could think about recently? That, that would do? Oh, um, the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. Last year, go to the AFC Championship game. They have a line that's I, – I, they had a line last year I thought was amazing. I mm-hmm. thought their line was fantastic. you got Taylor Lewan on the left side and you got Jack Conklin on the right. And then you have to think about, it. hey, we already gave Taylor all this money. Uh, we can't give Conklin all this other money. Uh-huh. They give it to Ryan Tannehill for some reason. <laughs> but <laughs> that should give you, as funny as it is, that should give you a blueprint of, listen, before they sign Ford, they're going to have to sign Allen. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Right. If Deion right. Dawkins is your Taylor Lewan, that's the only time I'm ever going to say that, so don't crucify me. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack Conklin is your Cody Ford on the right side. Yeah. And then you're already paying your quarterback his money because that, that rookie deal's done. Oh, man. Cody Ford at left tackle though, Paul? No, I'm not I'm not saying the tape says this is a good idea. Right? So I'm not <laughs> I'm not championing that argument, but what I am saying is that if you do see sign Deion Dawkins to a longer term deal, um, what is going to happen is you you have numbered the days of Cody Ford, Ooh. right? 
you really have. And at that point, what you look to do is you say, okay, I hope Cody Ford is a great 2020 season because we can deal him and he'll be very affordable and a team will pay us quite a bit Mm -hmm. because he'll have two years left on, you know, a second round deal. And a lot of teams will be interested in that. But if you sign Deion Dawkins to a longer term deal, yes, Cody Ford is three years left on his deal, all very affordable, but you've numbered the days for him because you're, if you're going to sign Dawkins, Dawkins is not going to sign a three-year deal. It's not going to happen. It's going to be a five, six, seven-year deal. It's going to be a left tackle deal. It, that's it. That, that's all there is to it. It's not going to be a three-year deal. Oh, well, he's, got all the, he's got all the leverage. You know what? Next year at 30 years old, David Bakhtiari is a free agent. <laughs> How many times are we going to talk? He's a free agent every year. <laughs> I'm just saying, sign him. Put Dawkins the right. So or a right couple of things. Ford. <laughs> well, and and here's where there's a few holes in the argument, right? So Deion Dawkins last year played 1,015 snaps. He was tied for eighth in the league in penalties. He had 11, right? He was tied for 35th in the league in sacks. Only gave up four. Ty Nisecki, right, played 358 snaps, had five penalties, right? So had a third of the snaps as uh, as Dawkins and had you know effectively 30 percent more penalties per snap right okay. but allowed zero sacks cody ford on the other hand played 739 snaps eight penalties which put him 23rd in the league and seven sacks allowed which put him nine that's your nine. left tackle paul <laughs> i'm again i'm not saying the tape i'm not saying the tape supports the argument i'm simply talking about if you're walking into a draft, you try the second round tackle thing before Dawkins. I'm not sure that the team really believes that he is their left tackle. Right. Ooh. I'm re- I'm really not sure if they believe that. Well, so, we, yeah, we've said for a long time, we think they're both guards. Yeah. I mean, I they're, mean, they're, they're, but this is what you get in, in the second round. Yeah, they like, profile this, this better as guards, but I think that the, the amount of tackle talent that's going to get pushed down to 54 especially this year would be a lot better even though i i know you know we, we talked about it with the, the the senior bowl it looked it, it, it was rough senior bowl is rough uh, senior bowl's bad with tackle play bad bad, bad 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 but we're not pro scouts paul i don't know what they're looking at sometimes i i, I only know what i see on tape and if it's i don't know <laughs> But I love that. I love that fact that the comparison back and forth, because every, obviously we know everything's going to be focused on the draft this week when this episode yeah. comes out. But the, you know, A influences B. You got you got to you got to get a good grasp of what A is before you could talk about B. And right. you know, the AJ Klein, Voshan Joseph. You, you just signed AJ Klein, Voshan Joseph. Joseph is coming back. Milano's coming up for a contract. Okay, Dawkins is coming up for a contract. Last year, just like they drafted Voshan, they drafted Cody Ford, and. You know, you had Adrian Waddle in the fold. You had Ty Nasecki in the fold. You had you still have Bates. Bates, I think, could be serviceable. Um, mm-hmm. So, I think the bottom line here is with your discussion and all those stats you just gave me on the line, what you're saying is that Quentin Spain had a more of an impact on Deion Dawkins than John Feliciano had an impact on Cody Ford. Yeah, we're fighting exactly now. We're saying. fighting now. We're gonna fight. Uh, no, now the fight starts because you you, you insulted Mongo. You insulted Mongo. 